Hey guys, today we are going to discuss the chapter of origin and nature of soil of the subject geotechnical engineering, third sem civil engineering. Myself, Assistant Professor Gaurang Prajapati from Civil Department, MGTA College, Nausari. So let's start the discussion with the topic that is origin of soil. Let's start the first topic that is soil formation in the geological cycle. Now soil are formed by weathering of rocks due to mechanical disintegration or chemical decomposition. Whenever a rock surface gets exposed to atmosphere for an appreciable time, it, it disintegrates or decomposes into the smaller particles and thus soils are formed. Soil is formed by the geological cycle. So in simple words, whenever the soil surface will get exposed to the atmosphere for a longer duration of time, it will decompose or we can say disintegrate into the smaller particles. Cis. This decomposition will occur in two different manners, one is that is chemical weathering, that is this one, another is chemical decomposition. Okay. Then the geological cycle consists of the following stages, that is erosion, transportation, deposition and upfill. Now moving forward the next slide, that is erosion or weathering. Let us discuss the types of the erosion. Basically there are two types of erosion or we can say the weathering, physical weathering and chemical weathering. Now the responsible factors for the physical weathering are temperature changes, waging action of ice, spreading of fruits of plants and abrasion. While in case of the chemical weathering the process involves are hydration, carbonation, oxidation and solution. Now let us discuss about each weathering in detail. Let us start with the physical weathering. So let us discuss its definition first of all. The process by which the rock disintegrates into the smaller fragments due to the factors like temperature changes, wedging action of ice, spreading of roots of plants, abrasion, etc. without involving any change in its property is called the physical or we can say mechanical weathering and the responsible factors are these are the factors which we have seen in the definition that is temperature changes, waging action of ice, spreading of roots of plants and abrasion. So in simple words, see because of these four responsible factors physical weathering will occur but the main portion of the physical weathering is it gets disintegrated or we can say it breaks down into smaller particles without involving any change in its physical properties means its properties does not get changed whenever the disintegration or decomposition takes place that is the main portion of the physical weathering ok. Now next moving for the further slides now let us discuss this each factors in the detail first of all temperature changes. Now, the different minerals of the rock have different coefficient of the thermal expansion due to the temperature changes, unequal expansion or contraction of these minerals occur resulting in stress in rocks and disintegration of the rock particles. So in simple words, the different minerals of the rock will have different their thermal expansion of the coefficient. Now the thermal expansion coefficient is the coefficient of the temperature. Whenever the temperature changes, either it will expand or we can say it will contract. So, it will ultimately result in producing such stresses or we can say the forces so ultimately decomposition takes place ok that was the first. Now second factor that is just a minute that is waging action of ice. In cold climate the water held in the pores and cracks of the rocks gets frozen as the volume of the ice formed is more than that of water expansion occurs due to the waging action of the ice formed the stresses are developed in the rocks and causing the disintegration of rocks. So in simple words whenever the cracks occurs into the rocks the water get filled in that one and whenever the temperature falls this water will convert it into the ice of the pores just a minute ice of the pores and uh, definitely the volume of the ice is more than that of water so ultimately what will happen it will create the forces and stresses in the rocks and ultimately it will disintegrate the rocks ok. Now the third factor that is spreading of the roots of the plants. Roots of the trees and shrubs growing in the cracks and faces of the rocks apply forces on the rock and resulting in the disintegration of rocks. This is very similar to the previous one. Now the previous one the water was get filled into the cracks. Now in this one the roots of the trees or we can say plants will get spread into the rocks. Uh, cracks of the rocks and ultimately they will expand in the cracks and ultimately that will create the disintegration of rock. And then the fourth one that is abrasion. 
as the water, wind and glaciers move over the surface of rock, abrasion and scouring takes place. It results in the formation of rocks. In simple words, it is one kind of erosion we can say. Whenever the water, wind or glaciers move over the surface of the rocks, it will get eroded and ultimately it will create the formation of soil. So these were the factors which was creating the physical weathering. Now let's move towards the next point that is chemical weathering. Now let's start the discussion with the definition due to the alteration in the chemical properties of the rock minerals new compounds are formed this is referred as chemical weathering. So the main portion in this one is it is also some kind of the physical weathering like the rock gets distributed or we can say it is converted into the smaller particles but the change is now this time due to the alteration in the chemical properties now ultimately chemical properties of the rocks is getting change this is the main point in the in this chemical weathering in case of the physical weathering the properties of the rocks does not change while in this case the, its chemical properties are changes this is the main difference between two weathering now the process involved in the chemical weathering are hydration carbonation oxidation and solution okay so now let's get discuss about each process in detail so before discussing about the different uh, individual factors let's discuss one thing we are discussing about the chemical weathering so ultimately chemical reaction will take place in each of the four process okay let's start with the first one that is hydration now in this one water combines with the rock in this process and the result in the formation of the new chemical reaction so as we discuss water will combine with we can say the, the rock okay and ultimately they will create a new chemical composition starting with the second one that is carbonation the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere reacts with the water to form the carbonic acid that is h2so3 so in this one the reaction will take place between the carbon dioxide which is present in the water sorry in the atmosphere and it will react with the water then moving forward the third one that is oxidation it is the reaction of atmospheric oxygen with the minerals in the rocks oxidation causes decomposition of rocks and it is more or less similar to the rusting of iron so again in this one atmospheric oxygen will combine with the minerals present in the rock okay so ultimately chemical reaction will take place and the last one that is solution some of the soluble rock minerals are washed out from the rocks by the rainfall or percolating surface water thus resulting in decomposition of rocks and formation of soil so in this one whenever the rainfall or percolation occurs so the soluble rock minerals will wash away due to the rainfall and ultimately that will create the decomposition ok so in all these four process the chemical reaction takes place between the two different particles ok now moving forward the next topic that is transportation of soil the agencies responsible for the transportation of the soil particles are by water wind ice and gravity so let's discuss in the detail starting with the water transported soil so smooth running of water is capable of moving a considerable volume of the soil then soil may be transported in the form of suspended particles or by the rolling and the sliding along the bottom of the stream then particles transported by the water range in the size from the boulders to clay and lastly the soils that are carried and deposited by the water is called the alluvial soil so in simple words whenever the water gets floating or in whenever it flows it takes considerable volume of the soil with it okay so ultimately that will be in the form of the suspended particle or and it will move by the either rolling or we can say the sliding along the bottom of the stream okay so the size of the moving particle that will be from the boulders to clay and ultimately these soils which moves along with the water is known as alluvial soil over here we can see in the figure i have kept the figure of it now next that is wind transported soil like water wind can erode transport and deposit the fine grained soil soils that are carried and deposited by the wind are known as alluvial soil and large sand dunes are the form by the winds sand dunes are a common rather occurrence in the desert areas of the africa asia and usa so again in simple words like water wind can also erode transport and deposit the soil such soils are known as alluvial soil now like rainfall occurs in our region because of the water in, in areas of the desert usually sand dunes occur and sand dunes are the common occurrence in the areas of africa desert and usa means basically in the desert okay ultimately that will create the decomposition okay then next point that is glacier deposited soil 
now the word glacier means ice formation so glaciers are deposited of ice form by the compaction of snow as the glaciers grow and move they carry with them soils varying in the size from fine grain to huge boulders soil gets mixed with the ice and are transported far away from their original position and deposits directly made by the melting of the glaciers are called the till so in simple words first of all glacier occurs because of compaction of snow whenever the compaction of snow occurs ultimately glacier will create it okay and when the glaciers grow and move ultimately they will also carry the soil with them one and the ultimately soil will get mixed with the glaciers or we can say the ice and they move from their original position such soils are known as we can say till then gravity deposited soil now the word itself suggests that is gravity means it will move along with the gravity so soils transported and deposited by the gravity are known as that is colluvial soil gravity can transport material for the shorter distance and they are termed as talus so ultimately because of the gravitational force the soil will move from one place to another but the distance will be quite short because it is moving because of the gravity okay and such soils are known as colluvial soil now over here we can see some of the pictures of the gravity deposited soil this one then okay in this one also we can see gravity deposited soils rocks are there okay and in the last let's discuss about the different types of soil most of the soils were already discussed in the previous uh, segments though some of the new will be there say alluvial soil they are deposited by the running water and found in the river banks and the river beds so ultimately because of the running water the soil occurs in the either river bed or we can say the river banks are known as alluvial soil they are generally poorly graded and uniformly graded now moving forward that is alluvial soil they are deposited by the wind and they are mainly coarse grain particles and poorly graded they are found in the desert region now previous one was the soil which was occurred because of the running water due to the running water now in this case it is moving or we can say it is occurred by the uh, we can say the deposited by the wind then that is lacustrine soil or we can say the lake soil soil particles carried by the flowing water and deposited in the lakes now again soils are created because of the flowing water but this time it is it is getting deposited in the lakes okay that's why it is known as lake soil they are highly composable and having high void ratio and the shear strength is less next that is marine soil soil particles carried by the flowing water and deposited in the ocean say this is the way similar to the previous one the it is produces by the flowing water but in the previous case it was deposited in the lake now in this one it is getting deposited in the ocean and these are known as marine soil okay talking about its property its shear strength is better than the lake soil and have high void ratio then glacier soils or we can say the drift they are the mixtures of the stone pieces seals sands and clay which are from glaciers so because of the glaciers the soils are cast which are known as the glacier soils it is the combination of the stone pieces seals sands and clay and talking about its property they are the generally well graded soil then colluvial soil soils is transported and deposited by the gravity is known as colluvial soil so because of the gravity such soils are occurs then cohesive soils soils in which the absorbed water and particle attraction act such that it deforms plastic plastically at different water contents are known as cohesive soils so ultimately in simple words whenever the absorbed absorbed water sorry absorbed water and particles gets attached with each other and ultimately it will it is deform plastically at the different levels and ultimately it is known as cohesive soil or it is also known as we can say clay also then black cotton soil it is the residual soil containing high percentage of the clay uh, clay minerals it has a very low bearing capacity and ultimately it is possesses a high swelling and shrinkage property so black cotton are such soils which is having high clay minerals particles in it and the last one that is loam it is a mixture of sand clay clay and silt it is the combination of all these particles so hope you guys getting each and every components in detail okay so thank you